You're listening to Patch Bay on TYM KRS. Welcome to Patch Bay, conversational podcast all about audio equipment, music, audio engineering, recording, live sound, and uh, that's all that John sees in his uh, RSS feed on his phone when he uh, goes to look at what the latest episode is going to be about, because his uh, podcatcher uh, cuts off after that point, uh, so he never sees the topic. Uh, uh, so this is a surprise for John S.A.Z. Uh, you know, y- you don't know what you're going to hear, but that's what you did. Okay. There you go. That's all right. <laughs> um, just as as, as a, oh, we're having experimenting today. We are. Is, is uh, so everyone out there, does Shane sound any better today? <laughs> so I'm hoping. Um, I took my sound better pills today. Also, I, I noticed I got a little weird crackle just now, and I'm not sure if I'm going to just turn my volume down, input volume uh, from you anyway. Uh, all right, so back to new gear situation. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot. Uh, we're getting ready to go on our road trip here in a couple of weeks, and we'll be gone for basically a better part of a month. And so before that we uh, leave, I have to have everything uh, staged and ready to go for the next season of uh, all of the shows that we do. So the mailman has been here every day for like two weeks. Oh, well, this is good. Yes. <laughs> delivering, <laughs> delivering, delivering things. So that's Not about so six months. Card. No, no. Um, that's about six months of donations to the various shows, and they've all been allocated to improving the quality of the content on every front. Some fronts more than others, because, well, they're more expensive. But, hey, you, uh, there's not much we can do to change those rules. Um, true. So, uh, other than, like, uh, a lot of, like, source material and electronics stuff for the various DIY projects for Toymaker Television and all that uh on the audio side of things for the podcasts uh uh, shane of i and i have talked about this several times on the show we're working on putting together the studio rewire uh and that involves being able to have dual computers running skype that each have their own independent skype call going and they're independently patched into the uh, mixer here in the studio so uh, we can do multi-track recording um, of multiple co-hosts or guests or whatever here in the studio uh, and not have to rely on some uh, piece of uh, uh, software that gets broken regularly when Skype updates. <laughs> um, so I was going to add in drumroll and Colin drumroll, so we'll have to get him on. Yeah, there's Colin and there's a couple of other people too that... Um, are really probably uh, the the audience is going to uh, enjoy thoroughly. I'm it's not sure if we're nice. going to have the same co-host every single week, but there's a, a small group of people out there that uh, have been put forward by others, and mm-hmm. they have told us that these people need to be on that show. I, I, I'd be really excited to not talk all the time like i i do enjoy talking all the time but he he, he really does he does he doesn't shut up but uh Uh, the main thing that we're testing here today is that i picked up uh two two channel audio isolator boxes they basically have an an audio um isolation transformer uh, uh two of them in each one of these boxes and uh it's just a simple electrical connection out to some jacks uh it happens to use rca jacks i will probably modify that mm, so the isolation jacks are they're stereo in stereo out um are yeah. they powered they're not powered no oh, okay so it's a passive just box. a transformer sitting between you know uh you've got a left in a left out and uh and there's an audio isolation transformer sitting in there between the in and the out that's a, yeah, it sounds like a ground lift kind of a thing. Yeah, just basically uh, lifting the ground, disconnecting the computer from the uh, mixing board. That's that's handy. I have um, a, a bunch of my DIs have that sort of built in. Um, I don't know if I sent you a link today on, but I found Tape Op posted a, the transparent like preamp. It's called Transparinator. Or something. I okay. thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, it has no color whatsoever. I don't know 
why you would buy it. But there's all these, you know, big wig guys like, this is the most cleanest thing I've ever heard. It doesn't even sound like there's a mic preamp in front of it. Anyway, back to uh, Honestly, back. I would love something like that. Um, yeah. Because I don't want color when we're doing podcasting. Okay, I'll send you the link. It, the only thing is it's an it's, API lunchbox. Yeah, and it's up. super expensive, those lunchbox things. I, I don't even know why people buy those. You know what? I think it's just for the multicolors. Uh, also, to uh, lots of guys, this is totally off topic, but lots of guys will lunchbox um, a mic preamp from a console because usually what will happen is nobody can, nobody wants or will buy a SSL anymore. So what they do is they take them apart and they sell the channel strips out of them. And a lot of times they'll only they'll sell the EQs as one module and the EQ, uh, like the preamps as another module. So guys will make lunchboxes. And what that is is just a square 19-inch rack space box where you put whatever modules you want in it. Radial uh, makes a bunch. And, yeah, and um, the, the type, the module size that goes into them is a 500 series. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and then what happens is um, when you buy these, these lunch boxes, you, you need to have a power supply for them because a, a lot of these channel strips came out of a console that already had a power supply. So the, these, like radial makes a box that you can connect these things to that has the power supply. So for a guy like me, not that I have the money for it, um, that's genius because I, I, I don't, tr- I trust myself with nine volt batteries, but I don't trust myself with actually plugging something into the wall. <laughs> anyway. Um, so back to the isolation boxes. So who, who makes them? Uh, it's just the absolute cheapest crap that I could find. Cool. Um, well, it's making a difference. Oh so, yeah. It's completely uh, it, making yeah. a difference. And I'm sure the, the audience will definitely agree because you are much, much cleaner, much louder. Nice. I like it. Now, well, let's be clear here. Shane is not on his crappy mic that he was making me suffer through. Right. <laughs> the last couple true. episodes, he forgot his mic at band practice. So yeah, they were dude. really, really crappy. So don't compare this one to the last episode. Compare it to the last time Shane actually showed up with an SM58, is it? Um, Yeah. It looks like a 58. <laughs> it's a Sony, actually. Oh. And... um. <laughs> Would you believe? I actually like it better than the 58. This yeah. is that, that blues band I tracked a couple of weeks ago and I sent you the stuff of. This is the mic I used for their vocals, too. I just had it, grabbed it, and brought it with me to the studio as well. So it seemed to work all right for that. But So like uh, electrically, yeah. the, uh, the basic idea here, uh, for those of you who may not be uh, familiar, is that um, a lot of computers... Um, especially the types that you would uh, find that don't have any fans whatsoever in them, they also tend to run off of external power packs, and those power packs don't have a three-prong plug. They have a two-prong plug, which means that their power supply has a floating ground. Mm -hmm. So when you hook this sort of equipment that has a floating ground up to equipment that has a real earth ground, it kind of wants to use the shield connection of the interconnecting wires as it's ground and it causes all sorts of interference on whatever equipment it's connected to Mm. so to decouple those uh we're isolating it with a transformer there's a, a coil on one side of the transformer that's hooked up to one piece of equipment there's a coil on the other side that's hooked up to the other piece of equipment so they're not electrically actually connecting they're not touching but uh, when the AC signal of audio goes through one coil, it induces an AC current in the other coil. So you can actually get the sound to go from one place to the other without them being physically connected to each other electrically. Exactly. And well, yeah, and what tends to happen too is because the one plug that's grounded, um, you're reversing the ground at that point, then, right? It's what's happening. Like the balanced cable is. Uh, the ground's being contradicted, basically, right? There's all sorts of nastiness going on there. It's yeah. a very other... complicated subject that I don't claim to completely understand <laughs> all of it. But uh, The yeah. other issue, too, is, is that uh, when you're running stuff like that with eighth of an inch jacks and computers and stuff, the more crap you run it through, that noise becomes even more compounded. So, so putting the isolation transformer between the incoming computer signal and your you know your preamp is is probably the best bet i mean if you're gonna run you can run it through a few other things but when it 
when it comes out the other side of the transformer, it's as clean as it's going to be. Right. So, yep. you know, that if you were, you know, not obviously the, the worst thing to do would be to put the ground um, or, or run everything through and at the very end, run it through the transformer. Right. Yep. So uh, the basic idea here is that they sell these little uh, cheapo Chinese manufactured um, uh, boxes that are marketed to audio um, uh, car audio guys. Right. And uh, we all know that car audio guys will buy anything. But um, true. <laughs> <laughs> so basically all it is is a little uh, aluminum box, the one that I got with a simple circuit board on it that just has a, a couple of uh, transformers and a couple of uh, connectors on each side. Uh, and it's designed for stereo audio, so it's got a left channel and a right channel. But, you know, this is a recording studio environment where we're doing a podcast, uh, so we're not interested in stereo for that purpose. So instead of having a left channel and a right channel, what I have is uh, uh, the direction from the Skype output um, that you know, I'm getting Shane's audio coming in, and I'm isolating that line out of the line out of that computer. And then when I'm sending Shane the audio back from the studio, I can isolate it on the way from the mixer to the line in on his uh, Skype computer there. So we both get crystal clear Ma Bell uh, audio, or as best as it's going to be anyway, with my yes. crappy Canadian internet. I was going to mention the, um, the box that you bought. I actually have a Radio Shack um, preamp for a phono preamp and um it works on a nine volt battery but it's got um rca ins and rca outs it would be nice to have if it doesn't have a transformer in it but the one it's kind of the same idea and and basically like for doing transfers at, at work which i've been doing a lot of lately um this is the cleanest way to get to to boost the phono level because the, like a regular record player if you plug it into um, it needs it needs to go into they were built to go into like a you know a preamp or a tuner or whatever w that you would have different selections for taper you know that kind of thing um, but the problem with those things a lot of them they're like super duper colored right so um, same kind of idea the only problem with the radio shock stack box is they didn't put a ground on it so you know usually uh, LPs would have that little ground cable that you could like screw into the wall or whatever so you could you know ground your record player yeah so then have they don't have a connection for that so what i end up doing is i take the little two prong thing and i stick it in between the box lid <laughs> where the box closes because the box is metal right so put my rcas in rcas out and i stick that thing and then sort of half close it and wiggle it enough that i don't get that nice electricity sound that comes yeah. through when you're not grounded um, so it's basically the same idea. The funny thing is it's, it's, it's powered though. Well, it has to be right. Cause it's boosting yeah. the level, right? It's not like yours where it's a, it's a transparent cleanliness. It's like Mr. Clean for audio. Anyway, what other gear did you get? Okay. So for this whole project of, um, it's the, the toy maker studio rewire, but, um, in the context of this show, it's how do we get Colin on the show? Um, project right true yep uh project Excited. code name colin <laughs> <laughs> so um so uh the other box i got is a uh four channel uh compressor expander limiter gate you know dynamics processor and, and it, it's a uh, four channels i uh, sorry expander gate deesser so there's no, four. No DSer. It uh, no DSer. Okay. It it does the gate. So yeah. we can walk through these because a lot of people they've heard these terms a million times. They don't necessarily actually understand what they mean. So All right. there's a gate. All right. So what happens with the gate is <laughs> the gate. Hey, let let me explain not, this. Go one. ahead, Shane. <laughs> okay. So there's what's called a threshold. And the threshold is the point at which something starts to happen. Um, so with a gate, it's kind of the reverse of compression to a degree. Um, when the signal goes under the threshold, it shuts down the audio, incoming audio. Um, and depending on the attack and release times, how quick and how slow it takes to turn the gate on and off, you will either get a nice smooth 
uh, no noise, or you'll get it while well, it's cutting off too quickly. All right. And the, re- the reverse, when we're talking compression, is sort of the same idea. You set a threshold, and then it basically says every time the audio goes over this line, I need you to bring it down. And usually there's an attack time and a release time. For me, I like really quick attack times and sort of medium release times. But there's also a ratio. So usually the ratio is, you know, one to one, two to one, four to one, or in a limiter's case, infinity to one. So basically, um, you know, if you're talking four to one, it's, it, it's uh, you know, if the audio goes over the threshold, it's going to bring it down uh, four over one, um, basically. So it's going to bring it down as much as it came in in four db increments i believe and a limiter basically says if it goes over this line uh which is the infinity to one that's as far as it goes and it brick walls it um depending on how you do it so that that's kind of the gist of that what else is in in the box the expander and the expander is a reverse of compression um Kind of, well, not exactly like a gate, but it's it's a reverse of compression, and it helps to bring the low levels up a bit. And yeah. so, what happens sort of when gist. you combine all four of these together is that Shane can be as boisterous as he wants, or as quiet as he wants, and and he can stop talking. Uh, he can you know shuffle around in his chair, whatever. So all the quiet noises that aren't right up against the microphone completely disappear before they even go into the mixer mm-hmm. okay if he's being too quiet which he does because he leans back in his chair when he should be up against his microphone because he's you know he's he knows how to do this but that doesn't mean he actually does it right okay it's true yeah terrible terrible <laughs> microphones okay <laughs> so it brings his volume up when he leans back and if he gets too close and he's too loud which happens because he gets excited yeah, and he's talking into the it, microphone. It brings the volume down. Now, if he makes a really big noise, like uh, yells at his dog or something, or his dog barks, mm-hmm. instead of the mic spiking above where it would clip, the uh, brick wall limiter hits it and brings it down really hard, really fast. Very quickly. So and it puts it it. all of Shane's audio into the perfect uh, uh, dynamics range. Unfortunately, the box doesn't add talent. No. <laughs> Nah. Ah, damn it! I need a talent box. Anyway, yes, that's I exactly what. Should have read the fine print when I bought Shane. Yeah. I had uh, <laughs> I seen a there's a uh, uh, a mem going around with the distortion box, and it's it's like the Live Engineer sucko meter, and there's a button to switch from like share to like a bunch of different things, and then there's just a flip switch that says suck no suck. So, because it is like audio guys are always blamed for you know why the band sound you know the band sucks because of the live engineer not not just the fact that the band stinks but anyway i enjoyed it uh so yeah no uh so four channels eh? that's handy yeah and that's important for this because we have two microphones in the studio um and we have the two skype boxes sitting here they're not hooked up yet but uh soon soon people soon so soon. that's four channels that we need to be able to do all of the dynamics on on the way in so that Mm. instead of recording to a DAW and doing all of this dynamics uh, work in post-production, the dynamics work happens live. I like that idea. Uh, My dog's barking for some dumb reason. Yeah, we Um, we need to have a gate so we don't hear him. Yes, her. Um, Her. Yeah, she's being a jerk today for whatever reason. Um... Right. So I guess, yeah, the whole point will obviously be to lessen the amount of work that Whisker has to do. Uh, As a side note, though, I would be judicious with the gate until you get it set good for everybody. Maybe make some notes as you go, because gates can be kind of I've I've never recorded with them in line, uh, usually post for me anyway, just. I use um, gates on every single episode of every single podcast. So, you yeah. know, I've I've spent a lot of time finding the lowest possible gate just to knock out room noise and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it seems like gate it works very well when it's set 
down at like, I don't know, minus 30 or so, you yeah. know, so that all it's really doing is knocking out the hiss and the background room noise and that's all. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, for me, for like recording it, when I jump from tune to tune, you might have a gate set perfectly for a slower song on a kick drum, but then, uh, you know, on a quicker song, it, it might be chopping that attack off too much or you know or vice versa um so that's why i tend i mean i'll rec- i record with eq and i record with compression but i i tend to sort of leave that kind of stuff out of the mix until the end but yeah with recording i find well with like recording music i find that gates really aren't I don't know. I, I don't tend to jump for them right away. Yeah. I, in, a, in a situation like this, it, it makes more sense. I mean, if, if I have a section of a song where like the rhythm guitar player isn't playing for 16 bars, I just mute it, you know, like, uh, and I'll just mute the region. I don't even automate the mute in Pro Tools. There's a, um, if you control select the section that you want and then you Apple M it, it, it just mutes that region, which is kind of slick. And if you really want to be tweaky, you can fade the region out before the mute. But And this is a perfect case of one of those types of things where um, it really illustrates the difference between how you approach studio um, uh, recording work, like music recording stuff, and uh, live sound broadcast stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, on the broadcast side of things, gates you absolutely use. Uh, brick wall limiters you absolutely use. Um, and mm. you you have them set a lot more aggressive than you ever, ever would if you were recording music. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, it's it's good to know both techniques, though. When I mean, when you get into those types of situations, you know, it's you have to. If you're, that's why I'm not a big fan of doing live sound because I'm so used to being the studio guy that I, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I can do this again. No, I can't. You know. So, uh, although the other great thing about live is, you know, depending on the volume. Um, nobody's really going to miss or, or catch that the gate was set a little too quick on the kick drum, you know, I mean, for the most part. So, um, so it, it's kind of a trade off with this, I think is where you have to be really judicious because it's a, it's live and, and B it's, um, you know, it's being recorded. At, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit more tricky to do something like what we're doing. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, because that's, we're that's dealing with stuff. all sorts of different microphones coming in over a Skype connection, um, on the gate side of things, I have to be, you know, I have to set it down low enough so that it doesn't hurt anybody's um, uh, input. Uh, if their volume coming in is too low, the gate will chop it up and, you know, make it sound really, uh, you know, like little bits and pieces of it are missing. Sorry, a dumb question. Um, is it gate first and then... Uh, it, it, what's the signal chain on those? I have no idea. And... I have no idea how they wired it up. Yeah, because that would be kind of interesting to know. But I'm uh, assuming the gate happens first, and the expander happens second, and the compressor happens third, and the limiter happens fourth. Yeah, see, I think I would rather at the other... I, I think I would rather have the gate on the end, personally. But that's just me. Like, I mean, if I like when I was recording, I would, you know, I want to have the most consistent signal before I'm. Well, I guess no. Pardon me, because if you're not gating it off the top, then you're going to be bringing up crap. Yep. You know, which is so why I think they would have put it first. Put the gate first. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, hmm. I mean, that's how I do it um, when I master podcasts. I, that's yeah. the order that I do it. I always put the gate first and, you know, knock out everything that I can there uh, and try to just keep the audio. Um, another thing that'll be in our signal chain uh, before you ever get to the uh, dynamics um, uh, processor will be the, um, the EQ happens first in our circumstance the audio from the computer, the first thing that it's hitting is the EQ, and I'm going to scoop uh, out the frequencies right from the get-go that are not human vocal range. Mm, yeah, 1K. Warning. Mm, that one. So the <laughs> the top, the bottom, gone. I'm not too worried about feedback. Um, we make sure people use headphones when they uh, call the show, so that's yeah, pretty exactly. easy to deal with. So, you know, I scoop out the top, scoop out the bottom, and then send it through Dynamics, and then it goes into the uh, the uh, live recording system. Um, right now, it'll still be recorded multi-track into uh, our DAW, 
But uh, here in the near future, once we get enough donations and a little kitty there, we're going to be switching over to live H.264 encoding. So it'll be going straight mm -hmm. to video. And then he, after ragging on me for getting a better microphone, I'll have to get a better video connection because my crappy laptop will make me look like a Neanderthal. Although I kind of already am, so it's yeah, all good. I don't think uh, a better better camera is just going to more accurately display that you look like a Neanderthal. Yeah, this is true. Uh, um, what I was going to uh, – maybe I have to come up with some interesting mask to wear. Um, one thing I was going to mention, too, when my, my little – note about the rhythm guitar player and turning him off in a recording every time whisker talks um right now uh without the gate the if we were recording as stereo you would still get the wonderful noise of me not talking in the background and the room noise and all that kind of crap so when it's coming in and it's being recorded with the gate in line and the compressor and stuff like that it's going to be much more cleaner so on those sections where just me is talking or just you is talking, uh, you're not going to get all that extraneous yeah. BS. And that's so. one of the principal reasons why it's so important that we record in multi-track, and that's how we do it now. Um, mm. the, it's a, a more expensive to do it this way, uh, but yeah, sure. it, the end result is so much better because when I'm talking and Shane isn't, the gate that I apply to this thing in post-production locks Shane's audio all the way down to the floor. And uh, same thing when he's talking and I shut up. Yeah. And if, if, if it wasn't the case, you would have, you know, well, especially have prior to the... ducking, right? I mean, one yeah. track would be affecting the other and you really don't want that. That's true. Or if you just recorded it without anything and you didn't do any kind of processing, you would have, you know, the wonderful computer hard drive noise and my dog barking in the background and Very much all that so. kind of wonderful. So you need to get a dog, dude. No. I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't, How are we doing on time? Uh, we've got two minutes. Uh, two I don't know if you guys could, you guys probably couldn't hear that, uh, what just happened here in the studio on my side because of the gate. Uh, you probably completely missed it. Um, I've got this epic 1930s um, Westminster chimes, full-blown, huge chime system for a doorbell. And uh, the delivery guy just showed up with my uh, lunch and uh, rang the doorbell. And uh, I'm sure the gate probably caught it, so it didn't even come through. What time is it there, anyway? It's 8 o'clock here. Yeah, 8 o'clock. Really? Man, you guys... And that's lunch? Is yeah, it? Addie works night shifts. So... <laughs> right, that's true. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. We go to bed at so... 8 a.m., so it's an I... early lunch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, it beats the... What are you having? Because that probably beats the crap out of the supper I just had. I, uh, pure I think a Cajun burger from one of the local mm. places. I don't know. I'm excited. Addie orders <laughs> something. I'll find out when I put it in my mouth hole. I was listening back to the Epic Nachos uh, podcast today, episode 20, and uh, I'm still excited about Epic Nachos. I may have to have some this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can talk her into it because it's going to be reciprocal because in four weeks from now when I hear this one or whenever it is, I'll be like, I need more Epic Nachos. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be a problem. We might it's need to make T-shirts. Feedback loop, you know? man. Yeah, we'll need to make T-shirts, you know, www.patchbay.tv, eat Epic Nachos. Or something. Yeah, crap. There that we go. Badass. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> no, agreed. I totally agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a. We're totally off topic. Um, I'm getting a smoker this year, so I'm gonna try to make chipotle peppers, huh. which is basically smoked jalapenos. You think customs would have a problem with those? Uh, no. You know why? Actually, got a good story about this. Um, okay, up up here, up in the Great White North, we have Ukrainians, and they make. Kubasa, which is garlic sausage, which is you probably have had before, right? I don't think I've had that one, no. Okay, garlic sausage is to die for. We'll get Colin to agree with me on this one. When Being we get a on. Cadian, Cajun, uh, there's some really good sausages that uh, we eat, but I don't think I've had that one. Well, here, here's the issue, and there's certain places that make good stuff and certain places that make not so good stuff, and um, the further west you go, there's not a lot of people who can make it, so every time my, my dad drives out west, he usually ends up bringing you know, 10 or 15 rings with him. And anyway, long story short, he was working with a company down in Texas, and he had the same conversation we're having. Um, you, know, you really need to try Kubasa, and it's illegal to send food um, through the post, right? 
So what he did was he sent a he built a box with uh, I hope no buddy from the postal service is listening, but he built a box with blue insulation, put dry ice in it, put two rings of Kubasan, and then built it all up and taped it up and basically sent it back to the company as a return of like products <laughs> and they didn't they didn't check it which is amazing because and it, it was like two day express or whatever so it was it was still good by the time they got it but um and so he went sent it to like texas like way down south mexican border texas <laughs> and uh, these guys loved it so yeah i'm sure we could figure it out returned ic circuits or something we can send to you <laughs> or something like that yeah, yeah. i wouldn't mind trying it, some smoke it, peppers yeah, well, we'll figure it out. I have to figure it out this we'll year. But use it for yeah. epic nachos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. All right. <laughs> Thank was, you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we very much appreciate it. And uh, uh, like I was saying, uh, all of this stuff that we're doing here to make the show better, it all runs on donations with all the shows. So, you know, if you want to pitch in, it's uh, tymkrs.com slash donate. Uh, and do say which show um, you want us to put the money towards because we pay attention to that kind of thing. Um, if you're a patch bay person and, and you really don't, you know, care about the other one, say, I want this money to go to patch bay and, you know, I'll use it to buy Shane better stuff. Seriously, I will. All right, uh, that's it for us for this week. Uh, you guys can find this show every Friday at Patch Bay. TV. There's an RSS feed uh, there on the page, even though John S. in Arizona is not pleased with how the description displays on his phone. It is there, and it does work. Stop complaining, you old grumpy bastard. All right, that's it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Oh, God.